Welcome everyone in this NPTEL online certification course lecture on biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, today we will be studying the management of wastewater from slaughterhouse. In the previous lecture, we studied the management of wastewater from dairy industry. So, we are trying to understand the how the wastewater treatment happens in some of the industries. So, the, we are trying to take some case studies. So, today we are going to study the management of wastewater from slaughterhouse. So, wastewater management from slaughterhouse. So, according to livestock census 2014, India has the world's largest livestock population country, which is 50 percent of the buffaloes, 13 percent of the cattle, 13 percent of the goats, and 5 percent of the sheep of world population are actually in India. So, that means, the buffalo more than 50 percent of the buffalo of the world are actually in India. So, the slaughter houses come under the purview of animal husbandry division of Ministry of Agriculture, mainly for purposes of funding towards expansion and modernization of activities and respective local bodies are the main responsible for day to day operation and maintenance of the slaughter houses. So, now in the slaughter houses various operations are performed and waste waters are released. So, you can see here in the picture that uh, this is the place where uh, for a simple case the slaughtering may be done. So, waste water will be generated here. So, you can see the waste water generated it is some amount is acclimated here certainly it will be bloodish in nature or reddish in nature and there are then certainly skeletons and bones etcetera which are there. So, slaughter houses are classified also, but there is no official norm for the classification of slaughter houses. So, however, depending upon the type of animals being slaughtered, the slaughtered houses can be classified into large animal slaughter house, goat and sheep slaughter houses pig slaughter house and poultry slaughter houses. So, there could be four different, but mostly the large animal slaughter houses uh, we are will be concerning here. So, where the cattle and buffaloes are slaughtered and the wastewater gets generated during the process various operations which are there. Now, in order to assess the variations in the pollution load with respect to the number of animals slaughtered, bovines, goes, sheeps slaughter houses are further classified into following categories. So, large scale more than 200 large animals slaughtered per day or more than 1000 goats and sheep slaughtered per day. So, they will fall into the category of large scale slaughter house. Medium scale the one where 50 to 200 large animals or more than 300 to 1000 goats are slaughtered per day. Similarly, small scale where less than 50 bovines and 300 goats and sheep are slaughtered per day. Now, composition of slaughter houses wastewater. Now, meat processing effluents are considered harmful worldwide due to the complex composition of fats, proteins, fibers and high organic content pathogens, pharmaceuticals present in the wastewater which is generated in the slaughter house or meat processing industry. Slaughter house effluents are typically evaluated uh, using bulk parameters because the broad range of uh, slaughter house wastewater and pollutant loads. SWW which is the slaughter house wastewater contains a very high amount of BOD, COD, large amount of total organic carbon, total nitrogen, total phosphorus and total suspended solids. So, that means SWW the slaughter house wastewater will contain high BOD, COD, TOC, total nitrogen, total phosphorus etcetera. So, they will require lot of biological treatment in a way. The typical characteristics of actual uh, slaughter house wastewater could be like this. So, BOD in the range of 150 to 8500, COD in the range of 500 to 16000 with average of 5000. Similarly, TOC will also be high 50 to 750. Then total nitrogen in the range of 50 to 850, total phosphorus in the range of 25 to 200, 
Similarly, we can have TSS, potassium, color, turbidity, pH, etcetera. So, uh, these may vary, uh, but all these parameters are important to be analyzed for understanding how the treatment has to be done for slaughterhouse wastewater. Now, regulations for slaughterhouse wastewater management, there are certain regulations. Regulations are necessary to mitigate the environmental impact of slaughterhouses and the treatment methods that have to be used are regulatory requirement. Current regulations and discharge limits are different worldwide. So, that means, different industries like Indian Central Pollution Control Board, World Bank Group, then the European Community, the US EPA, Environment Canada, Columbia Ministry, also the People's Republic of China Ministry of Environmental Protection, Australian and New Zealand environmental agencies all have different uh, discharge standards. So, uh, these discharge standards are compared here with respect to slaughterhouses and these are the places where actually the slaughterhouses are more present in nature. So, World Bank limits are like 30, 125, 10 with respect to BOD, COD and total nitrogen. Similarly, TOC is mostly limited in the case of China. So, we can see the different standards which have been given by different countries including European Union, USA, Canada, Colombia, China, India, Australia, etc. And uh, these uh, regulations are similar in nature, but they have some variation with respect to discharge limits. Now, environmental impact and health effects of slaughterhouse wastewater. The discharge of raw uh, slaughterhouse wastewater to water bodies will affect the quality of water particularly by causing a reduction of dissolved oxygen and which may lead to death of aquatic life. So, certainly it will cause lot of effect. Moreover, lot of micronutrients are present in the slaughterhouse like nitrogen and phosphorus and which will cause lot of eutrophication. So, if untreated slaughterhouse wastewater is discharged to any river, so the river flow will be stopped in a way because the eutrophication will happen at the place where the discharge happens and that causes lot of problem. So, it is mandatory for the municipal corporation etc. to check that there should be no raw slaughterhouse wastewater discharge to any aquatic body. Otherwise, that aquatic body may die because of eutrophication very soon. The discharge of these nutrients triggers an excessive algal growth and subsequent decay and thus the mineralization of algae may lead to the deterioration of aquatic life due to depletion of dissolved oxygen levels and slowly and slowly that aquatic body will die. The surfactants major components in detergents may also enter the aquatic environment due to inadequate uh, the slaughterhouse wastewater treatment causing short term and long term changes in the ecosystem that can affect humans, fish, vegetations, everybody. Inadequately treated slaughterhouse events concerning the propagation of antibiotic resistance and pathogenic bacteria into the environment also is a major challenge because these animals may have some antibiotic resistance and they may also contain some pathogenic bacteria itself, etc. So, the wastewater which is generated from slaughterhouse is a must for treatment and it has to be treated very well. So, it must be treated efficiently before discharge into the any water bodies. Actually, it should be mostly recycled back, but there are certain challenges with respect to recycling of uh, treated wastewater. So, it can only be used in the gardening. So, in the process, it is very difficult to use the recycled water. So, th that means the Slaughterhouse should have a very large amount of gardening area etcetera where this treated water may be used. It will be very difficult to discharge the water also into the aquatic bodies. Now, these are the animals that we are looking at and these are the slaughterhouse and wet markets where actually these are slaughtered. So, during this period if these animals are already contaminated with any pathogens or antibiotic resistance materials etc. Then uh, they will be consumed, the consumption of food will lead to lot of hospitalizations etc. And also uh, 
a lot of contamination will return back to the food chain and this food chain because it will return to the food chain these animals will again. So, that means bioaccumulation may happen in the food chain itself and since we are using them in a cycle so that will cause a lot of problem. Also the bio waste which is generated during the processing of these uh, materials is very large and they are also habitat for rodent animals and flies. So, lot of environmental degradation may happen if you do not care of the slaughterhouse waste materials also. So, microbial pathogens derived from animals and plant waste may enter the stagnant wastewater and if it is used it they will again return back to the food chain. So, there are lot of challenges which are exist with respect to slaughterhouse wastewater and overall slaughterhouse waste which is generated. So, we have to very carefully take care of that. Now, what are the treatment methods uh, for wastewater this slaughterhouse wastewater and this will be similar to the municipal wastewater treatment and they will include primary, secondary and tertiary treatment. However, this does not eliminate the need for primary treatment. So, primary treatment will always be required because it is very difficult wastewater to be handled uh, because there may be hair may be present in the uh, slaughterhouse wastewater, there may be bones which may be present. So, the slaughterhouse wastewater is difficult to be treated and it will require all stages of treatment including AOPs and combined processes. So, there are numerous treatment methods after primary treatment which can be divided into four categories physico chemical treatment, biological treatment, AOPs and combined processes. So, we will try to see. So, preliminary treatment the purpose of preliminary treatment is to separate solids and large particles from the liquid portion and in the case of slaughterhouse screeners, sieves, strains etcetera have to be used. We have to remove the skins, we have to remove the hair, we have to remove the partial bones etcetera also uh, during the primary treatment. Then physico chemical treatment after preliminary treatment the effluent should be further be treated using primary and secondary treatment. So, this uh, primary physico chemical treatment may include coagulation, flocculation and sedimentation. So, in the coagulation process collide particles in the SWW are grouped into larger particles called flocks. The colloidal particle in SWW are nearly negatively charged which makes them stable and resistant to aggregation. So, coagulants with positively charged ions are added to destabilize the colloidal particles to form flocks and facilitate the sedimentation process. Examples of coagulants include the aluminum sulphate, aluminum chlorohydrate, ferric chloride, ferric sulphate and polyaluminum chloride. So, we can use any one of them for the coagulation process. We can use the dissolved air flotation also uh, in the physical chemical treatment that in fact it is used uh, very often in the slaughterhouse industries. The DF technology refers to the method of liquid solid separation by air introduction. The fat and grease along with the light solids are moved to the surface creating a sludge blanket. Flocculants and blood coagulants can be added to enhance the effectiveness of the DAF treatment for COD, BOD removers up to 75 percent. Electrocoagulation can also be used uh, for the removal of organic heavy metals pathogens from slaughterhouse effluent by inducing an electric current without chemical addition. So, this process can also be applied. The EC process generates uh, the metal ions mainly iron or aluminum ions using different electrode materials. Other electron materials using platinum, SNO2, TiO2 can interact with H plus and OH ions in the acidic and alkaline medium separately. Removal efficiencies up to very high can be achieved with respect to BOD, COD during electrocoagulation process. Similarly, membrane processes, different membrane processes including microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, RO can be used for SWW treatment to remove the particulates, collides, micromolecules, organic matters, pathogens etcetera. So, these processes are also very common. Then we have to adopt the biological treatment also for SWW. The biological processes can include be ligones with 
anaerobic aerobic or facultative microorganisms then we can use trickling filters activated sludge bioreactors or constructed wetlands so any of these techniques can be used broadly we can use anaerobic aerobic treatment methods so in the anaerobic digestion is preferred method for sewage for sww treatment due to its effectiveness in removing or treating highly concentrated effluent since the organic compounds are degraded by anaerobic bacteria in the absence of oxygen to co2 and h2 now anaerobic systems they have the advantage in achieving low sludge production minimum energy requirements with a potential resource recovery and high cod removal they can be used for the treatment of meat processing effluents and the anaerobic process which can be used include anaerobic buffer reactor anaerobic digester anaerobic filters anaerobic lagoons septic tanks and usb reactor so any of these techniques depending upon the characteristic of wastewater can be used for treatment of meat processing effluent or slaughter house effluent now similarly various aerobic processes can also be used for treatment of such wastewater and they are frequently employed for nutrient removal and further treatment of the primary treatment so the required oxygen and treatment time uh, with respect to aerobic treatment is directly related to the strength of the sww so depending upon the strength what is the characteristic whether it is low bod high bod and that itself will depend upon that how much water is being used during the cleaning if more amount of water will be used then certainly the waste water characteristics will be diluted but there are certain regulations also with respect to that how much amount of water can be used in the uh, per animal slaughtered in the slaughter houses so depending upon the characteristics of the waste water the oxygen and treatment time will vary and uh, the advantage of using aerobic waste water treatment processes include low order production because in the anaerobic process order may also get produced so h2s production may happen so the people may not feel well so the order will be less produced in the case of aerobic treatment fast biological growth rate can be achieved and rapid adjustment to the temperature and loading rate changes can be done so if the loading rate is changing in the wastewater treatment plant of slaughter house then it is very difficult to take care and also remember slaughter houses have variable load so they always have to use the equalization tank otherwise the treatment system may not work well so in the slaughter houses equalization tanks are always present for maintaining a constant composition which is fed to the actual treatment system different aerobic unit operations of sww treatment include like aerobic activated sludge process then rotating biological contactors rbcs then sbrs can also be used for the treatment of uh, sww the slaughter house wastewater we can also use the constructed wetlands for treatment of wastewater which is generated in the the slaughter house the constructed wetlands uh, emulate the degradation mechanisms of natural wetlands for water decontamination and they integrate biological physico chemical processes from the interaction of vegetation soil microorganisms atmosphere for the adsorption biodegradation filtration photo oxidation and sedimentation of organics and nutrients so constructed wetlands can be used but they should be used after all the treatment has been done so that whatever residuals are remaining they can be further be taken care of so results have shown that wide range of organic and nutrients removal may happen for a proper industry slaughter house industry where the frozen foods are also being made it is always suggested to have a full treatment plant which will include a equalization tank followed by all primary secondary tertiary treatment tertiary treatment may also be required in including aop methods and after that the water should be discharged into construction wetlands and there the treatment may further happens then it may be used in the 
gardens etc so that all the water is used inside the industry itself as i told the advanced oxidation processes have many a times have to be used for treatment of slaughterhouse waste water so aops are highly diverse and there are many methods which are present you can refer to my uh, another set of lectures on physico chemical treatment of waste water where aop methods have been described in very detail so you can refer to that there are various type of aop methods including gamma radiation ozonation ultrasound technologies then we can use uv with h2o2 the hydrogen peroxide we can use uv with ozone or we can use photocatalysis among others for oxidation and degradation of organic matter so because different types of fat proteins blood related materials are present in the waste water generated from the uh, sww so these uh, compounds are difficult to degrade because they may be aromatic in nature so we have to use advanced oxidation methods so as to instigate the oxidation of all these organic matters so whatever residual organic matter is present after all the primary secondary treatment that can be taken care of in the advanced oxidation process where oxidation and degradation of organic matter happens the main advantages of the aop is the high reaction rates as well as very low treatment time so certainly the oxidation processes in the aop is are very fast thus the treatment time is less but the cost will also be higher maybe as compared to the biological treatment renewal efficiencies more than 90% can be achieved for sww in terms of secondary effluent in terms of toc and cod as a post treatment method so we always treat the secondary effluent in the aop method to further reduce the load and after that the water may be taken to the constructed wetlands we can use combined processes also for the treatment of waste water which is generated in the sww the implementation of the combined processes is operationally and economically beneficial for sww treatment since it couples the advantage of different technologies to treat high strength uh, industrial waste water now as i told earlier that the sww is very complex waste water so treatment technique may also require com uh, complex processes which have to be combined together in a proper way so the combined abr as uv h2o2 system is recognized as a uh, cost effective solution for sww treatment with removal efficiencies of 95% of for organics and nutrients removal at optimum operating conditions so the combined processes of activated sludge then the equalization tank then uv h2o system where we are using hydrogen peroxide along with uv for oxidation of compounds so such combinations can be uh, thought of and they may have to be used for treatment of waste water which is generated in the slaughter house now we can see here some processes so we can see here the equalization tank which is there so waste water is coming here where it is being kept here for some time we can perform the aeration within the tank itself so this is being performed then we can have some aerobic treatment processes like one which is being shown here so we have activated sludge process where the treatment is happening then we certainly will have the sedimentation process which is working out for treatment of this waste water uh, we have to remove the sludge so for this industry because it contains lot of different types of materials including uh, the skin or the hair etc so we have to use the filter press uh, many times for removal of sludge from waste water so a filter press is present here further treatment may also be requiring aop process wetland etc so there are different technologies that have to be adopted together for treatment of waste water which is generated in a slaughter house slaughter house as i told it's a complex uh, nature 
and we have to very carefully treat the waste water. Now, the waste recovery, there should be separate drains or tanks for blood recovery, bone, fur, flesh, feathers, sponge content, content trapping, feed or manure trapping available. So, the, there are different ways which may be generated in the slaughterhouse and all have to be recovered, reused in some way or another. The unavailability of such tanks will constitute 50 percent increase in the waste load. So, this will happen if we are not able to remove. So, we can have the feathers also, we can have the skin also, we can have the hair also. So, all these things are there. Contaminated cooling tower from rendering activity should not be deposited directly into the waste stream without fat and solid particulates and flush recovery. So, we have to see that we should be able to recover fat, solid particles, flesh beforehand the waste water is generated. So, this is very important. Trapping, segregation and keeping solid particles out of the waste load reduces the biological load of the waste water and serves as a good housekeeping measures and thus it will help in the engineering management technique for the control of waste water from slaughterhouse because these are present and slaughterhouse operations are difficult to be taken care of and many times many of them are manual in nature. So, certainly it is problematic for the persons who are working there and also the machines though they are getting developed is still not well used in the industry. So, we have to take care of all these uh, segregation, trapping and uh, keeping solid waste out of the waste load of the effluent and that must be taken care of otherwise the characteristics may go abundantly very high and the, all the treatment system will fail uh, in case if it is not done so. So, waste recovery is very important if we have to properly treat the waste water generated from slaughterhouse. Uh, we have used lot of references, some of the references are shown here. So, you can always refer to these references for further studying the treatment of uh, management of wastewater from slaughterhouse. We will further study in the next lecture the how the CETP works. So, we will study the common effluent treatment plant in the next lecture. Thank you.